What's up, dears? Uh, today we are doing another Nano Reno 2018 entry. Uh, this one is also a demo. Uh, it is the Garden of Sinners. It is a Otome style visual novel, I think. And let's jump into it. This winter hasn't been much cold so far, but tonight it's freezing with cold. Freezing with cold. Hello? There are several reasons for it. The first one is time. It's already past midnight, and at night it's always colder than during the daytime. The second is the fact that I've been standing in one place for almost an hour already, and it's getting colder with each minute I stand. The third reason is the place where I'm standing. I'm in the middle of a bridge that crosses a huge river where the wind is particularly strong. I've been waiting for quite long, so I can't help but feel a growing excitement as I hear a sound of footsteps growing behind me growing closer. Once again, I take a look up to the river in front of me and breathe in deeply. The river is dark, deep, and probably cold, and I close my eyes knowing that in the next moment I'll be drowning down there. Wait, girl, what? <laughs> my eyes hurt, my nose hurts, my throat hurts, and at this point I start to think that I probably should have skipped classes and just relaxed at home today. But even if I got several days off at work, there's no way I'm staying at home for evening. The only thing I hate the most in this life is boredom, and curling in bed, feeling ill and hopeless is a synonym of dying out of boredom to me. You know, you look terrible right now. This must be the temp time Miki sends me a worrying look. I know that I'm not looking my best now, and there's no need to remind me of this every five minutes. I'm okay. Seen worse with my line of job. Just what kind of job do you have? You better leave it if it puts your life in danger, you know. <laughs> Don't worry, my life won't end just because of some cold. If that's even possible. Sometimes I wonder if I'm able to die for real at all. Anyway, it's a pity you can't go with me today. Why is that? I've never said I won't go anywhere. Look at yourself! You're walking like a zombie and sneezing all day. There's no way you can go partying in your state. Don't say ridiculous things. Since when, since when parties and fun harm didn't. Since when. Never mind. If anything, they're meant to make you feel better, right? Well, when you put it like this, it actually makes sense. Then decided, partying all night it is. Really? For real? Yippee! You are the best. Ah, I knew it. Miki actually hoped I'd volunteer to go with her from the very beginning to start this conversation. She's really simple, carefree, a bit stupid, and easy to read. But that's why she is my best friend in the first place. Good. Cause she's stupid and easy to read. <laughs> we had some. <laughs> we had several classes together on our first year of study, and she approached me during one of them, saying she liked my style and wondering if we can go shopping together sometime. I could never do that. Just walk up, hey! Oh my gosh, your outfit's so cute. Let's go shopping. I couldn't do that. No. <laughs> Apparently, we frequent. We frequented the same store and like the same brands, and those were the only things that we shared. Well, maybe besides the fact that we both like to party. Let's go shopping for new outfits first. I don't want to show up in a fancy place like MP6 and see my outfits twice. Wow, how did you know I wanted to go there? As I've said, Miki is easy to read, also very predictable. She frequents the same places, and there are very few of them. Not like we have better places to go to in the city, though. Oh, I had no idea. I just wanted to suggest we go there myself. Whoa. It should be what they call the best friend telepathy. No, it isn't. Besides, I don't believe such things exist at all. But it's fun to watch her take my work so seriously, so I guess I'll just play along. As soon as our classes are over, Miki and I head straight to the shop. It's located not so far from our university, so we decided to go there by foot. 
On our way there, I'm attacked by Miki's uncomprehensible babbling about some trivial matter. I occasionally add yeah and right here and there, just to pretend that I'm listening, but actually have no idea what she's talking about. It's so tiresome, I'm already regretting we didn't take a taxi. Finally, we arrive at our place of destination after about 15 minutes, but somehow it feels like several hours. Thankfully, Miki stops talking as soon as a familiar building comes. Meow, please, kittens only. Creepy kit. What the heck? <laughs> okay. This is a famous creepy, creepy kitten streetwear shop. The place where only the most popular brands are gathered, and all stylish people of Isekai City. Wait, is Isekai? Isn't that like another world? City freaking. Every customer here is called a kitten, treated as such from the very moment he opens the door. But you have to prove you're truly a kitten first. I put my hand on the door, right where the silhouette of a paw is drawn into the coat. Meow. <laughs> that's what you gotta do to get in the store? I mean, I would do it, cause I'm a cat person, but that's freaking weird. People passing by cast strange glances in my direction. I don't blame them, but I don't give a damn. They are not very interesting for me to care. Um, you know, you didn't have to make a cat pose while saying that. It registers on my phones anyway. Yeah, but it's more fun if I do it this way. Inside the shop is as dark and edgy as ever, but whenever I come here, I feel strangely at home. I guess I'm just naturally drawn to the dark and stylish places. Or maybe that's because I'm a regular customer here. Miki and, I'm, uh, Miki and I make our way deeper into the store, and in a moment, a familiar shop assistant approaches us. All I know about here is that her name is V. She's the same. She's the same university student as me and Miki, and she has more shifts than anyone else working here. I visit this place quite often, and despite that, there are supposed to be three staff people in total. V. V and L, and she's the only one that I've actually seen here. Well, not counting at one time I've met L. The last one, D, is a mysterious staff member that no one has really ever seen. Some say he's not on the shift, only on really special days, like a full moon or something, and some say he doesn't exist at all. Who makes up employees? <laughs> I had admit that intriguing rumor about him is one of the reasons I come to the store so often. The other one is all those stylish clothes, of course. Welcome, kittens. You can look around freely, and if you want something, just meow at me, all right? Okay, what should I wear for today's party? Ooh. You playing dress up? Uh, they're all kind of cute. I like the first two better. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, these two are super cute. I like I like this one. Afterwards we grab something to eat in a convenience store nearby and head straight to the club. Miki said something about meeting with her friends, so we decided to come a little bit early before the party starts. I'm so happy you can go with me today. Actually, I wanted to introduce you to someone for a while. They're twins and super cute and they're performing today. I mean, they're DJs, so it's cool you'll get to meet them at least. Oh, I forgot to say, they are ones of my girls. They are ones of my Oh, I get it. She wants me to meet some girls from her gang. That's the meaning she put behind mine. I'll go see. With that, looks of, with, ooh, with that look of hers, it's hard to believe she's actually a leader of a gang. Wait, what? <laughs> And quite big at that. It's pretty impressive, even if all of them are girls. I wonder how she pulls that off with that brain of hers. But maybe leadership is just one of her natural talents. As we enter the club, we are instantly greeted by two energetic girls with pink springtails. I must admit, I was expecting something like this. Mickey never hangs out with ordinary looking people. To say even more, all of her friends are kind of weirdos. Myself included, of course. Hi, Miki. 
Oh, that's so scary of you. Oh man, this is gonna be wait. This is gonna be a little hard. They kind of look the same. Hey there, that's my friend I've told you about before. Remember the cool girl from my university? Didn't know she was talking about me with her friends in the gang, but I don't really mind as long as she's crazy. I smile and raise my hand in a gesture of recognition. I see. Your friend really seems like a cool person. Nice to meet you. I'm Ichi. Nice to meet you, Ichigo. Also known as Ichi's girl. Ichigo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ichigo. Huh. Oh. It seems like their family likes strawberries. They're numbers one and five. I think that it's likely the first option. Never mind the reason, their names are actually pretty convenient. At least for me, I'm not particularly good at remembering names, but it's hard to forget a ridiculous combo like that. They even have badges of appropriate numbers making it difficult to mix them up. Nice to meet you, I'm Mary. Oh, even your name is cute! Kind of like a fairy tale heroine's name. The smaller girl stares at me with her sparkling eyes so intensely. I'm starting to have to do something. Now I see why Miki is a leader. If girls in the gang weren't this stupid, Miki wouldn't stand a chance. Girl, he would tell everybody. <laughs> wouldn't stand a chance of becoming one. I look around the club. Normally it would, it should be empty at this early hour, but there's an unusually big crowd of girls in the club. I see it's a pretty crowd in here, despite the party hasn't started yet. Oh, that's because of that designer, you know, the one behind that popular streetwear brand, Delio. Oh, I know, it's so cool. I even own several things from that brand myself. Wasn't that only a member? Anyway, he frequents this place at least since last month. It seems I feel like I changed her voice already. I don't freaking know what the fuck. It seems somehow his fans have heard of it, and now it's always crowded in here at this hour. I don't understand what all of those girls find in him now. But he's so handsome. I would never fight with other girls for one or two pretty faces. He's also rich and successful. There's still not a reason to fight among girls. Moreover, he's talented and says, stop fantasizing about men that aren't yours. Forgot we are members of a girl gang. We should stand for each other we should first. <laughs> I guess you're right. Well, I guess one of them isn't as stupid as I thought. To be honest, all of those fangirls look pretty dull, but I guess all celebrity fangirls consist mostly of dull girls. <laughs> Poor girls. What's so fun following someone else anyway? As I look at the crowd, I notice the subject of the discussion glance in our direction before quickly averting his attention on someone else. When I grab a drink before the party starts, after it starts, we won't be able to hang out with you and Yuki for a while since this and I are performing tonight. Sure, sounds good. Cheers for the new friend. Cheers for having lots of fun tonight. Storm. <laughs> the warm sensation goes down my throat as I sip on a cocktail. It's easy to drink and I finish in no time. The only thing that's left is slightly sweet aftertaste on the tip of my tongue. The mood lifts along with that temperature and now I'm convinced that it was a great idea to come here tonight. Drinking, partying, enjoying life is the best medicine. Let's drink one more. Cheers. I order several more drinks and everything around me becomes cute and lovable. It's really strange because even that stupid strawberry dude name sounds cute to me now. But that's not the only strange thing. Along with my concept of cuteness, my feeling of time gets distorted as well before I even notice when girls are gone and it's the middle of the party. I need to go to a restroom for a while. Sure, go. I'll be waiting for you here. I stand up and suddenly a huge wave of dizziness over me. Oof. It must be because of my cold and some really strong drinker. There's no way I can be drunk after this few cocktails. I slowly make my way through the crowd, blinking lights and loud music. There's so many people in here, how am I supposed to find a restroom? Oh, I could have asked Nikki where. No one's turning back now though. It's not even, I'm not even sure where I was a minute ago. I am just a little bit tipsy after all. Uh, hey baby, what are you looking for? Do you need a company? They eye me up and laugh in an unpleasant manner. Excuse me, starts getting on my nerves. A trash can. Why? Need to throw away something? 
Yeah, cause there's a huge pile of trash standing in my way. Oh, bird! Ah, uh, you little. Cause those are two huge guys when I'm alone and drunk. Probably wasn't the best idea I could have thought of, but there was no helping it. I always say unnecessary things when I'm drunk. Guess that at this point it would be better for me to just disappear. I turn around and try to make my way through the crowd, but there are so many people I'm barely able to move at all. Thanks to that, two hundred guys who are a bit dumbfounded earlier and not following closely, I swear I can feel it with my back. I push several people aside and get to a huge pool that I don't remember seeing before. There are fewer people than on the dance floor, maybe because of the catch of music, or maybe because... Oh, okay. I was like, wait, what? Or maybe because swimming in February doesn't seem appealing much, but the crucial part is that I can move around freely at last. My joy doesn't last long, though. I accidentally slip on the water and lose my balance. And at that moment, I can't say. However, I regain confidence. I regain hope as I, as soon as I see a guy dressed in expensive designer clothes standing in front of me. This is the moment when a handsome guy just happens to be nearby, the heroine. When the heroine is in a pinch, she treads to catch his own save the day like in all those movies. Right? I should have known better than to actually leave a situation like that to happen in life. The guy gives me a slightly confused look for a moment and then instead of catching me or helping me stand firmly on my feet, he just moves aside and I land right on the floor. The landing hurts and my betrayed hopes hurt even more. Oh, <laughs> I can see the guy who dodged me stepping back and watching disinterestedly as a huge hand lifts my head ow, up in the air and the next moment there's no air at all, only water all around me. It happens so suddenly, I have no time to hold my breath. My mouth and nose are instantly filled with water, and I feel like hundreds of tiny needles are stabbing my eyes. And then I remember the sensation when the day before I was gasping for air. But not here, an almost warm and cozy pool. No, I was deep under the water, drowning in the river in the center of the city in negative 10 degree weather yesterday. That's what I do as my part time job. I fake my death so. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. I fake my death so many times that being in life-threatening situations has become kind of normal, kind of a normal routine for me. The guy holds my head underwater for several seconds before finally letting me go. Then he steps back, stares at me with a smug face, on, smug look on his face as I gasp and cough up the water. It's painful, but I've seen the worst. <laughs> <laughs> The guy stops smiling and instead gives me a confused look. You can't even imagine how funny he looks right now. Are you nuts? What are you laughing about? Do you like water games? Huh? Because you see, I am sure you intended to kill me, but he ended up playing in water instead. Isn't that funny? Of course, he had no intention of killing me. We both know it. Well, our country knows no mercy for murderers, and the rules have become even stricter in recent years, so only completely mad people still think about committing murder. Besides, even if he did want to kill me, there are too many potential witnesses when I actually do it. It was clear from the beginning that his only intention was to scare me and to restore his pride I heard a good hope. But that's not going to work on him. I see you haven't learned your lesson yet. The big guy steps forward and bends over to, to me in clear intention to me in clear intention to put my head back in the water. It looks nothing but amusing to me though. Oh, well, we can play a little bit more if you insist. Just make it seem more real. The last time I felt so fake, it didn't excite me at all. The guy clearly didn't expect much reaction because he freezes and casts me a bewildered look. There's still an anger in his eyes, but now I can see a hint of hesitation and fear as well. That kind of fear when you meet something that you don't understand. Like things you've never seen before, people who are crazy and unpredictable. Of course, I don't actually know what type of feeling that is. After all, I myself am pretty crazy and unpredictable. I get up and fix my hair before turning and sending one last glance toward my abuser. I'm sorry, but playing with you is boring. Bye bye. I'm sure he won't follow me now. He really doesn't. I only feel him continuously staring at my back until I completely disappear in the crowd. The show was entertaining while it lasted, but I'm a little bit tired now. Must be because of my cold. I feel hot all over my body, and it's not because of the alcohol. 
that little bathing made me completely sober. Having not even, did we dry off on me? <laughs> Having not even said goodbye to Miki, I go outside and catch the first taxi I see, but I have no opportunity to get inside when I approach it. Someone suddenly grabs my hand and drags in the opposite direction. Get in the car before you catch a cold. Too late, I already have a cold, I want to say, but didn't have time as my kidnapper pushed me into a seat, closed the door behind me, and went to the driver's seat himself. I wasn't going to your place tonight, you know. Well, now you are. Even though I want to complain, I know it's meaningless. Joanna and I are similar in too many ways, and the situation is one example of the selfish things I usually do. Instead, I focus my attention on the road. I like the city at this hour, especially when I'm riding in the car. All those lights shine brighter than ever, and all of them are gone before I even notice. Leanne must have read my mood since he doesn't initiate a conversation. 20 minutes of silence if I arrive, arrive at Leon's mansion. You better own a mansion. It's huge, but I've grown so used to it by now that I remember every corner and detail of this place. Without waiting for an invitation, I make my way inside and take a sit on a sofa in the room. Thanks for earlier. No need for thanking me. I was going to bring you here tonight anyway, so I'm even grateful I didn't have to drive all the way to your house. No, not for that. Thanks for not helping me out back, at, back in the club. Did you want me to? Quite the opposite. It would be a disaster if people got to know about our relationship, especially through a situation like that. Well, I have no doubt you can perfectly handle the situation yourself. You're you little psycho. Leon pours me a glass of wine and sits on the sofa next to me. She don't need no more alcohol. An arrogant smile on his face irritates me a bit. Anyway, it's sweet of you to be worried about my reputation. Oh, don't make me wrong. Don't take me wrong. It's not you who I'm worried about. It's my own well-being. Okay? You know, I hate publicity. If I got in a, sc a scandal like that, there won't be room for me to breathe because of all those paparazzi coming after my soul day after day. Not to mention an army of those dull-looking fans. They'll probably want to kill me if they find out what kind of thing you I kind of want them to find out. I hope that will make them leave me alone for a week or two while they are busy crying their eyes out and plotting their revenge against you. I'm glad to know that you're still the same asshole you were 10 years ago. Cheers for that. Leon ignores my sarcasm and drinks slowly on his own. You look a bit sick though. Did you catch a cold today after all? Actually, it was yesterday. I had a nice long swim in the river after me. Let me see. You seem serious. Wait, I'll call a doctor. I grabbed the hand that touched my forehead a moment ago to stop Wait. Uh, did you hear the train you went honk? <laughs> I grabbed the hand that touched my forehead a moment ago to stop Leon from going. What's wrong with you? You sounded worried for a moment there. Don't tell me you're really falling for me. I am worried. You're the only sister of my best friend after all. He'd kill me if something bad were to happen. Oh? I'm pretty sure my brother has never bothered you. After all, you weren't concerned about him when you started meeting him at that. He'll kill you for sure, though. But that will be when he'll find out you stole his cute little sister from him. I'd say she's not as cute as she is devilish, though. Leon comes closer as he smiles and puts his hand on the sofa right behind my back. My heart stops beating fast, starts beating faster as I close my eyes until his heartbeat has the same rhythm as mine, almost like we two are in love. But wait, she's sick. You won't catch cause cold. <laughs> when I wake up in the morning, Leon is nowhere to be seen. Probably I already went to work. I suppose. Ah, oh, crap. Uh, page. Wait, I know it. Page up. Okay. <laughs> I suppose not too much time has passed since then. I found a tasty looking breakfast that was still warm in the kitchen. There was also a small note with a single sentence written on it. I hope you liked your pres liked my present. Even though I don't have much time to eat, there is no way I can ignore it. It looks and smells too good to just leave it here. I guess not I guess nothing bad will happen if I'll come a little bit late for this. Food this good should be enjoyed properly. Myself, so I pour a glass of red wine. Bro, why would we drink it in the morning too? <laughs> that Leon was so kind to choose for me beforehand. Put the juicy steak in it. You know what? 
I like steak. I like steak and eggs. I would eat that for breakfast. There better be eggs in this. In the small pieces and then chew it bit by bit while sipping the wine. While I'm enjoying this exquisite breakfast, I'm once again reminded why I started dating him in the first place. I value people who have a good taste, and Leon has an excellent taste not only in clothes but also in alcohol. His wine complements the meat perfectly. Ah, what a wonderful way to start a day. I need to fix my hair, put on makeup, and I'm ready to go. There's a huge mirror in the living room that I like to use when I'm at Leon's house, so I head there with all my things. I put on foundation, mascara, a pink lipstick, brush my hair, and only then notice something shiny in my things. Oh, so this is what Leon meant under the present. I take a closer look. I take a closer look at a necklace that Leon gave me. The necklace itself is simple and doesn't catch my attention. However, the pendant on it is different. There's some kind of precious gemstone in the pendant that has a pretty blue color, and I don't know much about gems, so I can't really tell what it is. I think I have a nice idea how this can be used. Done. Now that I'm ready, I better hurry up to university before lessons are over. To be continued. Okay, yep, so that was the demo for the Garden of Sinners. Um, it seems like an interesting concept, like, her job is to fake her own death. I'd like to get, like, more into that and stuff, because that sounds very interesting. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much for watching, dears. If it so pleases you, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you again next time. Um, most likely in my giveaway announcement video. Yay. Okay. See you later, my dears. Bye-bye.